Shalom and welcome to our 25th annual Feast of Weeks. This is part four of Great is Yahweh bin Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel. And only when you come into the knowledge of your true self can you love yourself. You can never, ever love your neighbor without first loving yourself. You can't possibly love me until you first love yourself. A man without self-love hates everybody in the world while he pretends to love his enemy. When he says he loves everybody, he's a liar. He only loves those who give him his paycheck. And he doesn't love them. He tears down everything anybody builds. <laughs> Even when white people come and build up beautiful homes within the ghetto, it becomes another part of the ghetto. It looks just like the rest of the ghetto, quickly. For those of us who are resurrected into the nation of Yahweh, we are learning of the great acts of Yahweh and our deliverance from slavery. Simultaneously, we learn that we are heirs of all the promises of the Bible. That means we learn knowledge of our inheritance of the land of promise. We, the so-called blacks of America, are heirs to the land of promise. Most of us live in the city and don't own anything. And don't think about owning anything. As we come into the knowledge of our history and culture and language, name and land, we find out that the Feast of Harvest celebrates Yahweh as the giver of grain. When we study grain, you can drop the G and learn that he's the giver of rain. And we know from study that there is no life without water. And there are no successful crops without rain for the harvest. And all we have to do to have rain in due season on our crops is obey the will of Yahweh, obey the laws of Yahweh. And he keeps his promise to us by giving us rain in due season. He gives us rain for our crops when we need it. When we don't need it, it's withheld. We learn this is the character of Yahweh. There's no such thing as Mother Nature. You can't look at nature and say, hi, Mom. <laughs> Yahweh is man. Yahweh is divine mind. And it is he that controls nature. It is Yahweh that is the giver of the rain. He's the giver of the grain. Our history is sacred because our father is to be regarded in a sacred manner. We're taught to have a ceremony for the offering of the first fruits. And ceremony is an institution. 
it means that the first fruits as a high holy day for us as Israel is to be an institution. We are to institutionalize our high holy day. Now, the Feast of Harvest, the Feast of Weeks, requires you to present your first fruit to Yahweh. But you must do this of your own free will. It is not my job to force you. It is my job to simply teach you. Consequently, I'm going to need that scripture which says, whosoever will, let him come. What is it? Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. That's certainly one. There's another one too, but this one is fine. Read. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. What I'm offering you tonight is free. You may freely come, you may freely drink from the water of life. That's what I offer you, the water of life. And all of you who are thirsty for the water of life, you may come of your own free will and drink to your content. And no matter how much you drink, it will not diminish my supply. Again, you are required, the Feast of Weeks requires you to present your first fruits to Yahweh. That means that the first fruit you pick off the tree 10% of that tree goes to Yahweh when? First. First. I don't care how hungry you are or how hungry your children are or how hungry anybody in the world is. The first 10% goes to Yahweh. Is that logical? Yes, sir. Well, what is so logical about it? It's the fact that the tree was created by Yahweh. And it was created to give its fruit by Yahweh. And the seed that is within the fruit carries the germ of life to produce another tree and fruit like the one you are offered to eat. And it is Yahweh who created the earth that the tree takes root in. It is Yahweh who created the system that sustains the tree. It is Yahweh who gives the tree the water that it needs to live. And the carbon dioxide is it? Huh? to breathe in. It is Yahweh that did all of this. And after doing this and making the fruit of the tree good for you to eat, that which he tells you is good for you. 
then isn't it logical for him to require you to give to him first of that that is already his? That he is so bountifully willing to share with you 90% of it? But your only requirement is to give him 10% of it first? Now look at the nature of Yahweh. The nature of Yahweh taught here through the first fruits, the first Feast of Weeks is Yahweh gives you 90% of what's his. He doesn't have to give you anything. It's all his. And he says, my requirement from you who appreciate me is 10% first of what's mine. I'll do all I need to do with the 10%. Now surely you can do more with 90% than I can do with 10. Yet I'm giving you 90% of my creation. Just give me my 10% off the top. And Yahweh follows that rule through all of your life, in every aspect of your life. He just says, of all that you have and all that you get your hands on, give me 10% of it. When? First. And if you do, I'll open the windows of heaven for you and pour you out blessings that you will not have room enough to receive. Now, if you have been given your tithes to the church and you still have plenty of room for blessings, then you need to switch from giving to your church and give to the man that keeps his promise. I'm here to witness to you that Yahweh keeps his promise of opening the windows of heaven and pouring us out blessings that we don't have enough people together I'm doing more with the few pennies that the few of you give to me than all 400,000 preachers in America have ever done for you. And they've been collecting from your great-grandma to your grandma to your mama and all your relatives. And all of them together have not done what I've done for you in this city as you continue to give to them. And the churches were full this morning giving to the church preacher who had done absolutely nothing. But when you, the little sheep, get tired of having nothing, come and see me sometime and I'll show you how to move from poverty to riches I guarantee it that's what the Feast of Weeks is all about teaching you the responsibility of the first fruits since you're the first fruits you're the first ones to be born into the knowledge of Yahweh then you have to learn your responsibility to Yahweh and you learn it through the Feast of Weeks. What do you learn? I repeat, you learn to present your first fruits 
your first income, you do that to Yahweh. And then I teach you the order that things should work. Put Yahweh in, you know, it's order, put him first. But the beauty of what I have shared with you and leaked out just now <laughs> is that nothing you do is going to work unless you put Yahweh first. And you, have, you can't go back and say, I'm giving it to God. No, no. God is not my name. And your illogical mind has been lying to you all your life. Every time you said you have given your offering to God, you are a liar. Because if you've been giving your money to God, I logically have to ask you, where is he? Where is his bank? Where was he located? Surely you can tell me what he looks like. If you gave it to him, he must have been material being because you took a material substance out of your pocket and left it somewhere. Somebody else took it. And somebody else counted it. No, you didn't give it to God. You gave it to the preacher. Now that's who you gave it to. And that's who your mama gave it to. And that's who your grandmama gave it to. And that's who your great-grandmama gave it to. And uh, your room is empty. A blessing. It's a blessing yes, to follow the laws of Yahweh. It's a law that we put him first. It's his law as our creator that we give to him our first fruits. Is that logical? Yes, Not only is he our life giver, but when we follow his laws, they bring us perfect health. And we who try what he teaches are witnesses that when we keep our minds stayed on him, what do we enjoy? Peace. Absolutely. If you don't have peace, your mind slipped off. Yahweh. Yes. And there's always somebody who would like to get your mind off Yahweh. Why? Because they are already unhappy. Why are they unhappy? Mine is not on Yahweh. They don't know Yahweh. Yahweh is not first in their life. I've just told you God is a title. See, this is not an emotional teaching. This is a logical teaching. This is reality. Go look up the word God. And you will discover it's a title. God is not a name of anything or anybody. It's only a title. I'm telling you about a man whose name is Yahweh that carries all power just in his name. All that I teach you is from this name, the knowledge of this name. In fact, King Solomon was ascribed to be the wisest king to have ever lived. And his fame and glory was due to the name Yahweh. I say it's a blessing to learn what Yahweh requires of us. that he indeed requires us to present to him our first fruits 
but that we must do this of our own free will. Yahweh doesn't want you to feel coerced into worshiping him. Yahweh doesn't want to feel that you are forced into serving him. In fact, if you don't give to Yahweh cheerfully, it's a curse. Let's go to the scripture. Yahweh blesses the cheerful giver. And the only way that you can give to Yahweh cheerfully is to understand who Yahweh is in relationship to you and who you are in relationship to Yahweh. And when you understand that relationship, huh, then you understand the benefits of obeying his will for you. Because it turns out to be a blessing. Where is it? 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 Read Every man according as he proposeth in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for Yahweh loveth a cheerful giver some people will give to Yahweh because they want a blessing I don't really want to give it <laughs> but I want to see if I can buy something from Yahweh <laughs> boy you're in trouble That's not the way to get love from Yahweh. Yahweh loves what kind of giver? Cheerful. The cheerful giver. You can't give out of necessity. Necessity means from compulsion, like forced. Grudgingly means from pain. You, you, you see, Yahweh doesn't want a thing from you that gives you pain to give it. Huh? It's like, wow, why are you requiring this of me? <laughs> Goodness, I'll give it because you God, you know. But I mean, I really don't want to give it. But right now, I'm hurting so bad. <laughs> I'll go on and give it. <laughs> but I'd really rather give what I have to somebody else other than you, Yahweh. <laughs> Truly insane, yeah, yeah. That's the insane mind, but we are illogical people. My people are illogical. Some people would rather give their money to a woman that they have a heavy lust, lust joan for. Then give it to Yahweh. And some women, you're not going to get away either. I said some women would rather give their money to a man they have a lust joan for, uh, uh, then give it to Yahweh. And we'll make an excuse like, see, Yahweh understands how I feel about this person. Be lying on Yahweh's understanding. See, Yahweh is not going to understand you giving the first fruit to your lover. He just isn't going to understand it. 
Yahweh is not going to understand you giving your first fruits to the power company. Say, but my lights are going out. Rearrange your life. <laughs> Yahweh just doesn't understand that. You should learn how to budget. Live within your means. You must be living beyond your means. That you want to take Yahweh's first fruits and pay your light bill. Maybe you should go to bed with the chickens. <laughs> or go to bed when the birds go. Too poor to have chickens? Just go to bed when the sun go down then. Maybe you could pay your light. You don't need lights in the daytime. <laughs> Maybe you don't need a TV and a radio and a jukebox. I'm here to tell you Yahweh is never going to understand you giving your first fruits to the man that holds your mortgage or to make your car payment. Yahweh doesn't understand none of that. So just stop lying on Yahweh talking about Yahweh understand. Don't understand none of that. And I'm his son and I don't understand it. And I'm here to tell you I don't understand it. And I'm never going to understand it. And I hope you learn to understand why you don't have blessings in your life. And why you can't climb up to heaven where my windows are and open the window on your own and climb in and get your blessings. See, you can climb Jacob's ladder all you want to. But you're never going to ascend into heaven with the angels. Okay, how hard and how long and how high you claim, climb, you'll never get there. Until you give Yahweh your first fruits, all of it, first. Is that clear? Anybody need a point of clarity on that? <laughs> Whatever you have, the first part of it belongs to Yahweh. You have 10 apples in a bag. When I walk by, you owe me one. <laughs> you walking down the street and find $10? You owe me a dollar first. Don't be talking about, whoa, look what Yahweh blessed me with. Yeah, you blessed me with my dollar first. Then you can be happy about the nine. <laughs> Your enemy has taught you to hate yourself and hate your God and not know your God. So you want everything you can get your hands on to do with as you please. And you never have anything. You always give it away to other people. But when you learn this law of Feast of Weeks, you will begin to have ever-increasing well, this concludes part four of Great is Yahweh ben Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel.